This is uh, this is June here. Yeah. June, camera people. June, June's on the stage. Dog been. Was it been four years? Uh, four years and a month. Yes. Four years and a month. And was your husband? Your husband was on it before, huh? Yes, my husband was on before. He came in this morning. He was here for fifteen years. God. Yes, and my mother's over at the mouse trap on the stage door. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah. When you're ready. Tuesday people, you're Tuesday people, yes, Tuesday. Um, I was talking to Monday people last night and they said, well, and they build it into their weekend, so they go, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and that's the way they deal with it. But Tuesday and Wednesday, I found people go, oh, I've, oh, but, oh, oh. Because you don't know exactly where you are, you know, it's not quite the weekend, you gotta go away and get completely pissed after and drag yourself home and then get up for work the next day. It's kind of weird, eh? No oh, complete silence. Perhaps you're not Tuesday people, perhaps you think. <laughs> Perhaps you thought it was a Thursday. I don't know. No, I checked the calendar. It's Tuesday, and you're trying to deny it. But no, I, James Mason, knows that it is, in fact, it's Tuesday. So don't you sit there with the lights on you and think, oh, there's a load of cameras around, and I'm just going to ignore them. Let's look at the cameras. No, what else? <laughs> yeah, OK, I've got a few cameras in, because, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you just need to crank your ego up and get a load of cameras on yourself. And uh, I know we've all done this before. And uh, I just thought I'd do it today. So. It, do ignore them, and if they come, you know, because sometimes they just sort of pan across and they come right up in your nose, and, and then you want to go, ooh. Have you seen them on, you know, on sort of blankety blank kind of thing, when the camera pans across people, and then the camera comes on and they can see them, and they go, ooh, and they look in the camera and they go, ooh. <laughs> and later they go home and people kill them. Um, uh, but yes, the beginning, the beginning, the beginning of the show. Ooh, I learned how to do this a couple of hours ago, it's quite fun. Ooh, it's quite fun because it just sort of ooh, makes that noise without any. Ooh, that's in slow motion. Ooh, I've only just got that now actually. Ooh, so it's quite fun, and that's all I do for two hours. Is a, ooh, ooh, and then I can do it this time. Ooh, well, not so well, it seems. Ooh, Ooh, balance. Ooh. Yes, so uh, thank you very much for uh, watching and good night. Uh, oh, I'm back again. Right. Um, you'll notice in my show that there is a certain amount of bollocks. A lot of the rest is uh, I mix bollocks with bollocks, I find. And so it sort of levels out a complete rubbish. Um, so do beware. If you're in here for the mousetrap, it's the wrong place, right? <laughs> It's the mousetrap, uh, an Agatha Christie whodunit thing that um, was in here in this theatre, started off in this theatre, in 1483. Um, and it ran here for 60 billion years. And Captain Kirk was uh, saying w stuff that was funny. Um, <laughs> just like that. I thought, I'd lived in, I thought, how can I get him in? And I thought, I can't really. But it's something to do with long length of time, and because they keep going, but they go where no man has been before. And I suppose a lot of women have been there and said, Oh, we checked it out, you men come in there. Um, oh, right on. Um, but uh, yes, and then the next day, and my grandmother, oh. So, 
Yes, the mouse trap. The mouse trap is here. And the mouse trap. Oh, and it's all. It's a story of a mouse. And these. Oh, and then it says, who, who did it? Who did it to the mouse? And it was. Oh, it was. A, it was a big. And you put the the big ball bearing in. It goes. Dun, 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 dun. And it's oh, all. Oh, it's brilliant. And uh, oh, I've played it many times. So it's great. Back in the Christie, she. I. Oh, we go back one way. Me and Ag. Um, I used to hang out, I used to drive fast cars together. It's great. She's, she's, just, she's just an old... Uh, she's dead, isn't she? Um, yes, that was why it sort of dropped off after a bit. Just, just, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, and then, you know, that's... Uh, yes. So it was in here, it ran here for 400 years, and, um, and it had to leave the theatre. And you're probably wondering, you know, why did it leave the theatre? It left the theatre in the end because all the bricks in the, in the theatre, and all the foundations and, and the entire theatre turned to the show and said, Fuck off! <laughs> Who did it? Oh, get out. So many times. Put the ball bearing in, it goes down the thing and the track and the mouse. Anyway, uh, if you haven't seen the show, you'll be entirely confused now. Um, but uh, that is maybe, as King Gustav of Sweden once said. Um, he's quite fun as well. God, King Gusty. Anyway, uh, dun, 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 how are you? Any, uh, any bombs today? It's really, it's bombing season. It was the bombing season a couple of months, uh, m last month, wasn't it? You know, it's sort of, we, we get bombs, in London we get bombs all the time. Bomb, 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 and we got quite used to it, yeah? And it's sort of a blitz mentality that everyone's gone into. And people get hurt and killed, and, and even gas works get blown up now, which is kind of weird. But, uh, you know, I think, but, you know, it, it, uh, exactly. Um, <laughs> No, it's got into this thing where a bomb goes off, and if you're living in London, you go, where? A bomb? Where? Oh, OK, I'll go up uh, the Piccadilly line, <laughs> and then cut across the central line. OK, no, I can, on the tube, I can go around. No, it's all right. And, it, and you sort of build it into your programme, you know. You say, what, this whole road is closed off? Oh, right, uh, now there's another Boots the Chemist in, uh, in Tottenham Court Road, so I'll cut this again, no problem, you know. And it's, it's a brilliant excuse as well. I think that we've all used that excuse. Oh, sorry, I said, world bomb scare. Oh, wonderful fucking excuse. Yes, the entire, all, my whole flat was closed down. Uh, wasn't allowed out of my flat. I uh, had to lie in bed and snore uh, for a lot longer until they checked out uh, my, my duvet, which had a sort of bomb, perhaps maybe thing on it. And then I got up and I went to the bathroom and I had to check that out as well, because I had a maybe sort of toothbrush, maybe. And, um... I, got, I got on a train. I got on a... Um, this is a bit Londonist, this, but I did. I got on a... Was it, was it a train? I can't remember. Now, I got on a train and, uh, um, uh, and a woman just ran up to the, the, the conductor or, uh, or, you know, not the conductor, what's it called? A uh, guard, that's it, the guard. Not called a conductor, because he does that. Um, but on the bus you have a conductor, don't you? Don't you? That's a bit weird, isn't it? Bus conductor. He doesn't conduct the bus, he doesn't go, oh, left turn here. All together now, for me, bus for me, we love thee. Anyway, um, and so, yes, and so, this woman came and he ran up and said, there's a bo uh, unattended bag, unattended bag, the big bogey word, unattended bag, was over there. And she said, unattended bag. And we looked and we saw unattended bag. And we went, ooh, unattended bag. And like you do, because it looked just like an unattended bag. And to be honest, you know, carefully disguised as an unattended bag, you know, had moustache, dog glasses, and everything. But they were just sitting over there looking, hey, I'm an unattended bag. And she was doing that, and so we thought, ooh, and, you know, we've sort of pulled back. But this guy was, you know, he's a member of the, the staff. So we thought, you know, he's been trained, he knows what he's doing. So um, we went, he, we sort of pulled back, and we just left it to him, and he went, oh, unattended bag, eh, right. And he went over, and he was going up to the bag. And he went up there and we thought, I was thinking, okay, it must be a routine, he has to go approach the bag first of all, and, you know, do a you know, preliminary check, and I was going up. And he went up the bag, and he went up, and he leaned over, and he rattled it. <laughs> he really did, this is absolutely true, he rattled the bloody bag. And then he went, nah, it's just a bag. <laughs> and we're going, oh, Captain Clever! <laughs> Rattle it, if it doesn't go off, it can't be on. You win. He did, this person did. It, I mean, because otherwise it's a stupid story. He did, he just rattled the bag. And I was going, I was there going, he's going to chase, he's going to, it's a thing, it's a very tricky, he has to, he's like, what, what? And as he rattled it, I turned my shoulder to protect myself. <laughs> it would have made not much difference, but you do do that thing, oh no. 
Oh, I'll just cover them. <laughs> That'll help. So, yeah. Sorry. And um, I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put this over This is quite fun, isn't it? Um, well, you don't know yet, but I mean, there's this rolling thing. You know, because people do that. They measure streets. Have you seen people? <laughs> <laughs> We go down, they, it's not like that. They have a sort of a roundy thing and a handle and they just go down like this. It's a bit of a, not a great job, I don't think. <laughs> you know, on your career's advisory things. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Well, how about rolling a circle then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. You go. You could do it maybe as a sort of option, but it wouldn't be someone who just come into the crazy office and oh, there's only one thing I want to do, and that's roll thing. I saw someone do this, and as a job, I'm really, I know it's difficult to get into, but no, it isn't. All oh, right, thanks. Oh. They do, they measure things as they 10 metres, and then they go 20 metres, and then they add them up, so they quite a lot of metres. So this, this is, you can do that with this, that's quite fun. Quite like that. So I'll leave that here. It's a bit neater. Um, yes, yes, and sorry about the, my, the beginning isn't, da -da, isn't really, you can't do it in stand-up. I've tried to work out how to do a big entrance, and uh, you, can't, you can't sort of uh, light some smoke and, 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 and pull back the curtains and go, hello. <laughs> Doesn't really sort of happen, you know. And uh, stand-up comedians and the monarchy, very similar in this area. Just, you know, there's just no, there's no real way you can, uh, the monarchy just had to invent fanfares. They invented fanfares, very good fanfares. Four blokes with trumpets, dun, 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 trumpets with towels hanging off them for some reason. And dun, 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 dun. In case they get hot, they go, oh, dab, dab, dab. And, dun, 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 dun. and it gives off an emotion, doesn't it? Because it keeps going, hey, dun, 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 dun. And it keeps going up. And uh, gives that emotion. If you're in the room waiting for monarchy to come, you're going, it's giving us this emotion of, here they come, here comes monarchy. They're gonna come in the room. You just watch, here they come. They're a bit like it, aren't they? You sure it's today? Now. Yeah, they all, the Queen has to pay tax now, yeah. So I wonder if she has said, uh, she's funny, I'm saying, no, those are my work jewels. <laughs> yes, yeah, strictly for work, no. Or well, 80% of them, I wear 20% of them on day off. You know, that's my work crown, it's totally tax deductible. <laughs> yes, no, okay, it's a fixed asset. No, it's a gross capital income. Oh, perfect. You must get it, she must get a bit bored occasionally. And, um, and all these palaces have been burned down. Hampton Court burnt down, Windsor Castle burnt down. That was very weird. It's obviously Liz falling asleep with lighted fag. That's what I think. <laughs> and Phil's going, just you be careful, Liz. Don't you fucking fall asleep with fag. I go, fuck off, Phil. I'm a queen. I want a fag. I have a fag. <laughs> 41 years I've been a queen. I have a fucking fag. Ah, right? <laughs> oh, look at these paintings. Marvellous paintings. They're all oh, on fire. I'm on fire. You're right, you're right. Run, Phil. Run, run. Scarper, scarper. Quick, Andy, Andy, piss off out there. Tell them we were nowhere near, right? <laughs> uh, my mother and father were nowhere near in Guatemala at the time, uh, shooting sheep for... Because um... he does that, doesn't he? Prince Philip shoots things. He's head of the World Wildlife Fund and he kills animals. He's kind of a contradiction, he really is. Come here, you lovely panda. <laughs> ah, you lovely... <laughs> He's just come I'm head of the World Wildlife Fund. It's my job to... To shoot them, look after them, shoot them. Kill them dead and let them live. Protect them from death, but shoot them dead. <laughs> Depends what they look like. Does he go, what is it? Is it, <laughs> is it one of ours or one of theirs? It's like the Second World War. Is it one of ours? No, it's one of theirs. <laughs> oh, it's one of ours. Oh, shit, sorry. Sorry, you're okay. Oh, well, <laughs> no, it wasn't me. It was my son. I like to shoot things and get them on the wall. That's my main ambition in life. It is these people have these big heads sticking out of the wall. It's my job to get heads sticking out of the wall. And uh, fun, in this room I have all these heads sticking out of there. There's a big rhino and all that kind of stuff. And then if you go into the next room, you can see all the backs sticking out in that room. Because <laughs> what we did was we captured them, brought them back here, get them on a trolley and say, run at that wall at high speed, will you? <laughs> they shove their head through, we put a little trophy around, and then we close that other room down. Because it looks a bit weird, you know? 
Yes, yeah, so he's head of the World Wildlife and he says, my job is to look after endangered animals. But there are a lot of other animals which are not endangered at all. I'm going to shoot the buggers dead until they become endangered. Then I'll look after them and build up their numbers. <laughs> then I'll shoot them dead again, then build them back up, then shoot them dead again. I'm a one-man idiot. <laughs> but also, very good ambassador for my country. Oh, yes, because he went out to China was the last time he was used as an ambassador, wasn't he? And he went out and he turned to some students and said, you know, they're all very slanty-eyed here. I mean, if you are ambassador, I just think there's... Uh, you couldn't have done anything more stupid. You know, what an insult the country you're going to be ambassador for. I mean, just, ooh, my God. Anyway, that's, that's, and he shouldn't be called Prince Philip, should he? No. Uh, because, if, you know, there's this thing of, uh, which is old and, and crap, and I hate it, which is that women take men's names, and I hate that, like Mrs. Peter Smith, and the woman's totally disappeared into this bloke, and, uh, you know, into a person, into his personality. So I hate that, but if you're gonna do that, then he shouldn't be Prince Philip, he should be King Elizabeth, shouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> And then he said, what's your name? Uh, King Lou. <laughs> Didn't quite hear that, mate. Uh, King Lou. <laughs> King Elizabeth, right? <laughs> Are you a dangerous animal? <laughs> <laughs> then the Queen wrote the Annus Horribilis speech, a speech from out of space. She dropped in two words of Latin, and I just don't know why, to be honest, because she's never done it before. Perhaps in the Queen's speech each year, you know, because this year it was leaked out, you know, big excitement. Um, and perhaps she's getting into a stand-up comedian kind of thing. So, uh, my husband and I, two men went into a pub. <laughs> and one said, no, you fuck off. <laughs> oh, anyway. What? No, you piss off, mate. No, I'm the Queen. Um, that's a good put down, man, isn't it? What? What? No, you piss off. I'm the Queen. Um, off with his head. Oh, we can't do that anymore. Um, she wrote Anna Cerebris, and the journalists sort of reviewed it and said, well, Anna Cerebris, of course. But it's just, where does it come from? I mean, she just dropped Latin in. This year I've had Anna Cerebris, uh, a shit year, basically, <laughs> in your parlance, I should cook her. <laughs> I think she was in the Twilight Zone at that point. <laughs> Rod Sterling was always great with his fags thing, because it was all, you know, remember the beginning of the, um, of, um, the Twilight Zone, it would all start off um, just weird, wouldn't it? And it says, you know, and, and a monkey would come on and play a banjo, uh, an old granny with a can of soup, and then it would cut back to Rod Sterling standing there. You go, what the fuck's he doing there? And he's there with a the fag saying, a monkey, a granny, a can of soup. It couldn't happen, could it? But it could in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> you just shovel out any old rubbish in there, couldn't you? you know? A banana, a can of grease, an elephant, and a cheese chunky. Um, could it happen? No, but it did in the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Follow the story. <laughs> what, what do we do now, Rob? I'll oh, just muck about a bit, and then, and then one of you goes to heaven. All oh, right, got you. <laughs> he was right. He was he was quite groovy, Rob. But there's also tales the unexpected with a sort of British tales the unexpected. There's always a push at the end of the tale. Do you remember that on telly? Push at the end of the tale. They would go along and push. And they were easy pieces to write because all you had to have is something unexpected happen. So it's so it was a blow. Yeah, exactly. Well, what have you written? Um, your brains are advancing me here. But no, you say a bloke, and he's, he's, he has a relationship with a, a woman, and, uh, or his wife, or whatever, and he thinks his wife is seeing someone else. So he, he goes home from work early, and uh, she's at home, and, and he goes home at four o'clock, and he opens the front door, and a pig eats him. <laughs> totally unexpected, isn't it? You could not get any letters coming in saying, I totally predicted the pig at that point. You could see it a mile off, matey. Don't you put one over on me. No, no way, piggy wiggy. Don't know if you do the last line, but it could, you know. Piggy wiggy 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 wiggy. Because they do on points of view, don't they? I don't know. Um, yes, so this proves my point. Whatever I was talking about, I have no idea what I was talking about. How did I get onto that? Oh, yes, um, yes, the Queen. Yes, that's it. So, it's all gone very strange for the monarchy recently, and they've, um, and, uh, the family, they've all split up and everyone hates each other. They used to get married in enormously long churches, which was bizarre. All these huge, no, it's no wonder that the, the marriages split up, because they'll, they get pissed off with each other, just go to get married, don't they? Well, this long aisle, where, where is the altar? Have you seen the altar? Do you know the altar? We don't know, we're just, we're just wandering around in lots of gear. And eventually they get, you get off my train, why are you pissed off? Don't like you anymore. I quite like you, then. <laughs> and the Queen, she used to be very sexy, didn't... In the, during the war, she was quite sexy. She looks a bit pasty these days, but cool. 
Drew in the water, she was quite sexy, wasn't she? I know no audience can believe this, but... <laughs> all the audience are queen, sexy, no way. Oh, her and Marge, during the Second World War. Whoa, fancy them. They were mechanics on heavy goods vehicles, weren't they? Remember that? They did that during, the, you know, WRAC or whatever it was. And they go, no, 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 that's fucked, that man. That's fucked, mate. Yeah, it's a carburetor. It's completely fucked, yeah. What do you think, Liz? Yeah, it's uh, your sparks or your carburetor, mate. Yeah, you need a new one. Gah, fuck, give us a fag, Marge. Nah, fuck off, Phil. Give it, Phil. Liz, Liz, you know, not Phil, is it? Not even married yet, are you? Sorry about that. Yeah, you just get your names right, Marge. Or, uh, stop you predicting who I'm gonna marry. Sorry about that, Liz. Got out of that one. Um... Yes, so, uh... Uh, the next day, uh, yes, yes, so, yes, uh, that's a normal story. Yes, monsters. I'm quite into monsters. Monsters are quite interesting, because they're on te they're big in our psyche, in human beings, in our psychology. We, we know about monsters. We see them on television and films. Dracula, the big monster that was uh, on the film thing. And, um, uh, and that's good, but I've never actually met a monster. You know, you're never in a, in a news agent queuing behind the monster, and then they're going, oh, curly whirly, what do you want, Dracula? Oh, I'll have a sherbet bon bon. And they, uh, Sherbet Dab would be nice. So, um, but I remember my first monster was Doctor Who and the Daleks. The Daleks were my first monsters. And they were very, very scary. And all kids knew, as soon as the Daleks came on telly, you had to hide behind furniture. <laughs> we never actually watched the Daleks. We just listened to a Radio 4 version of the Daleks. You say, dog, dog, what's happening now? They go, well, uh, uh, the Daleks were woof, and uh, woof, woof, woof. And they're going, oh, woof, oh, woof, woof. And then they're going, ah, oh, woof. It's, it's over. Um, it was a dog, he couldn't speak English, you see, so. Anyway, yeah, so that was the Daleks. And they were very scary, because they had a death ray. If you remember how they were designed, they had a death ray. We will exterminate, we are the Daleks, we. They were quite sort of tremorously as well. We will. And on one side of the death ray, on the other side, they had, of course, a plunger. <laughs> We will exterminate, everyone will be exterminated, unless we decide... Yes, extermination, essentially, that's... Why have we got this? What? What's... All right, exterminate... Ex what's the plunger? Why have we got plunger? You will die, or... Do you have any plumbing? I don't... What? Is it pl death or plumbing? Death or plumbing? Death or plumbing? Death or plumbing? Plum plumbing? Mainly plumbing. Okay. Plumbing, I suppose. Do you have ink? Do you have ink? We can put ink around and do circles, you know? Do sh shapes. Death plumbing or... No, just death or plumbing. Death or plumbing. Death or plumbing. Can... You got a block sink? Oh, she has a block sink. Come on. This is my two friend Daleks. This is Steve the Dalek. He has two death rays. He is very dangerous. And this is Kev the Dalek. He has two plungers. <laughs> he doesn't really count. Piss off, Kev. <laughs> I've got two plungers. I know. Yes, well, block sink. We will unblock our sink. That will be good. Come on, lead on. Oh, it's blocked. That's great. We will unblock this sink. Yes, then you can go free. Well done, Mr. Stephen. Now, can you tip me up? I can't quite reach. <laughs> Just lift it high, lift it high. Okay. Oh, got it. Oh, we're falling into the sink. What did they have the plunger for? They did have a plunger. You look at the pictures. They've got a plunger. They're still on telly now. They've got a bloody plunger there. And uh, why? <laughs> you know, it, it was never, ever used, was it? Uh, perhaps they used to walk up walls, you know, because they could use it as suckers. <coughs> but um, you only had one, so they could look as if they were about to walk up a wall. <laughs> Use it, as, use it as a sort of bluff thing. So I will walk up this... OK, I've already got one, haven't I? <laughs> Small kids, oh, you're crap. Just... So it was that, and then they had... Uh, sometimes, they didn't, sometimes they didn't have a plunger, though. Sometimes they had a three-pronged claw. Um, do you remember that sort of grabbing thing? Like you get at fun fairs, you know, where, where kids can steer it over a bunny rabbit, a furry bunny rabbit, loads of furry bunny rabbit, and the kids put it and they drive this... <laughs> and it's over the very... It opens, goes down, feels the bunny rabbit. <laughs> Comes back with absolutely nothing and says, there's your no bunny rabbit, there's no bunny rabbit at all. Well done. Congratulations on no fucking bunny rabbit. <laughs> we nailed the fuckers down. 
and the Daleks had those. But that's no point. There's no point in the Daleks having that, because all they did was exterminate. Exterminate, exterminate, we will exterminate. Uh, they never said exterminate, but now we will gather nuts. <laughs> and build a nest for the winter. So there was that. They had one eye, which surely... There were a load of defects in the Daleks, you know, which should have... What are you laughing about? What's the... Laughing in the eye. There's no laugh there. Um, they had one eye, didn't they? Big laugh. Um, and that was just uh, Doctor Who and his helpers. Doctor Who and his helpers spent years trying to work out how to get the Daleks. And they said, well, put fish down. What about if we tickle them with bananas? What about if we go, Ugh, you know? They just, his helpers were complete cretins. Some of them were quite sexy. But um, the main thing his helpers would do is, Doctor, Doctor, we've landed on a new planet. I'm going out. Oh, I've been captured. <laughs> All they do, wasn't it? Doctor, doctor, oh, I've been captured. Let's go over here, oh, I've been captured. Look, I've, oh, I've been captured. I'll just go and get captured. Doctor, we've landed a new planet. It's time for me to be captured. Oh, I've been captured. You never guess what, Doctor. <laughs> what, what? You never guess what, I've been captured. I've been captured by, oh, he's gone. Uh, hey, wait for me, you captured me. Oh, you refused to capture me. What a bastard. No capture today, then. Anyone want to capture me? And then the doctor, once he'd been captured, doctors have, who would have to go, oh, I'll go and get them, oh, do. And then he'd drag them back. Come on, just stay here. Stop running away. Oh, I've been captured. Stop being captured. Nail your foot to the floor. True story. Um, and they never worked out that they could just run up to, to defeat a to to defeat a Dalek, no. To defeat a dog, all you need to do is run up behind and put your hand over his, his eye, you see. And then he, can't, he goes, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. Um, <laughs> it's Kev the Dalek. Steve the Dalek. Oh, I don't know, otherwise, no. I haven't got a clue. So that's it, you know, that's brilliant. And then there, there was a, other big defects, like the dog saying, we will exterminate, everyone in this house will be ex Oh, they've all gone upstairs, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Fucking hell. They're all in the bedroom. Can you see they're all in the bedroom? Can you, you can see their feet. They're watching see the generation game. Oh, for fuck's sake. Didn't we know about stairs? You were supposed to do this, Kev. You're supposed to know about this. You're technical. God. But there was a later episode where they managed to get upstairs. You remember that? Doctor Who and the Daleks go upstairs, it was called. And um, they were upstairs, it was great, and they came in and said, now we're upstairs. It was a rope and pulley system, like, you know, like lifting in pianos through an upstairs window. They said, now we are Daleks, we are upstairs, we are Daleks, we are Daleks, woo, woo. Oh, they've all gone downstairs. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, we'll never, what, what are you both, what are you supposed to be down there? Why are both of you up here? God damn it. And then they had wheels, didn't they? Doctor Who, and the, well, the Daleks were on wheels, not Doctor Who. Um, and that was a big, you never saw the, Do the, the Daleks chase across the shag pile carpet, did you? <laughs> oh, the Daleks chase through the wood, very rare. Um, the, the Daleks in the ploughed field, very few of those scenes, were there? <laughs> um, 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 um. And the Dalek bar like, you're covering me with mud. <laughs> Comedy turned to camera, <laughs> you know. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Crappy old sound effect. <laughs> have you got a tissue, Steve the Dalek? I haven't got tissues. I'm a Dalek. I don't have tissues. Oh, Steve the Dalek. Steve the Dalek. What are we going to do, leader, then? I don't know. We're stuck in the mud. I will ask those animals with four legs that go moo. They might know. Tell us, who is your leader? Take us to your leader. We are Daleks. We're stuck. <laughs> and the cows are there going, It's a load of Daleks. <laughs> Looks like a lot of Daleks, isn't it? Uh, James. <laughs> yes, it does. Very well pointed out, Sean. Thank you very much. It's a load of Daleks got stuck in the mud. How quite unusual. Very strange. And why are we playing cows as well? That's another question. Why is Sean Connor and James Mason playing cows? And why does Izzard have to announce what his impressions are before he does it? <laughs> it's because they're so crap. I will now do an impression of you. <laughs> it's quite great, Sean Connery doing James Mason. It's, great. it's a real mind fuck it. Yeah. Uh, sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, <laughs> I can't do it. It really... It's hard enough to get into one, to get into both of them. We can get into one and then go into the other. Uh, Chardon. No, no, Mr. Pringle. Ah, well, Sean Connery doing me, that's quite weird as well. Anyway, um, I just quite like, I quite like, I'm no good at impressions, but I can do, I, sometimes they sound like Sean Connery and James Bond, sometimes they sound like Arthur Askey and Bernard Banning. Um, but religion is really what I want to talk about. <laughs> because, and philosophies as well, because philosophy and religion, religion and philosophy, they're two words that are both different. Um, <laughs> in spelling. But um, I th I'm not religious, but I think that, um, you know, religion's a bunch of collection of ideas, and, and no, uh, philosophy's a collection of ideas, but religion is also, I feel, a collection of ideas, but with a mystical God who is above. It's always above, never to one side. <laughs> never say, God is, of course, over there. Because <laughs> people would go and look behind the head and say, what, this is God? And they say, well, whoever there is God. Ooh, it's a duck. <laughs> Are you God? Uh, yes. <laughs> Quack. Show me a miracle. Quack. <laughs> okay. It's a duck. Um, Jesus, he was a, a religious kind of guy. Um, <laughs> well, was he religious? No, I'm not religious, mate. No way. Okay. Anyway, he was. He was. He had some interesting ideas. I, I look at him as a sort of Gandhi figure, because I'm not really into religion. Um, I'm not a religious person. I'm, I'm interested in the ideas. And he said, relax, be groovy, have big beards, yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> And then people killed him, and his ideas split into many different areas. And, um, and then it quite often, his ide people's ideas can be twisted into bad things, like, like, like uh, the Spanish Inquisition. I don't seem to remember Jesus ever advocating the Spanish Inquisition, you know. I don't remember where Jesus said, you know, and a parable. And man, he doth have two sons. To one son, he doth give land and goats and, and, and geese. To his other son, he doth stretch him out an enormously long <laughs> leg on a rack, and then ask him questions in a Spanish language. You know, it just got totally twisted away. And um, Jesus for me, big beards, loose flowing clothing, because it was quite clammy out there. Uh, <laughs> he wore flip-flops on his feet, because he was a kind of, you know, a sort of a fashion guy. And, um, and he was Jesus, you know. And he never moved very fast, did he? It was a hot country, and he knew that flip-flops are dangerous at fast speeds. <laughs> if you buy flip-flops, on the bottom is the size that says 40, yeah? And that's actually the speed that you can go. <laughs> And flip flops. I just thought of that. Um, <laughs> it implies slightly for fucking falling off. I think they'd be off. Um, yes, so, it's yeah, true. And he never, if you read the Bible, it never, he never moved very fast in the Bible. If you read it, it never says, and Jesus shifted down the hill at high speed. <laughs> or things like, Jesus did turn to his disciples and say, quick, Scarpa, it's the Rosers. And they, <laughs> and they did Scarpa down the hill. And that is his cup of Jesus to drop his flip flop and go. <laughs> and then Jesus to drop his another flip flop and say, Jesus, H. Christ. H for Herbert. And all the other disciples to drop their flip flops. Simon Peter to drop his, and Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. And all the English disciples to drop their flip flops, basically. All the ones from Oxford who are out on a fishing trip. And uh, even Judas, a local lad, dropped his flip flop. It could have been on purpose, though. I'm not sure about that one. And then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, no, curl your toes at the end of your flip-flops. They're really hard. <laughs> so Jesus, Lord, it is a miracle. It is a miracle. The curly toe. The curly toe miracle keeps the flip-flop on. <laughs> and the Rosas, who were the Romans, followed behind at a fixed pace. And their flip-flops did not come off because they were attached all the way up to about here. And that was why they ruled the world. <laughs> you must admit, there were never any great conquering nations that conquered the entire world with flip-flops. <laughs> have to be securely attached flip-flops. <laughs> otherwise you go into battle and people go, oh, oh God, hold on. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. <laughs> the Legion was moving forward at a fast pace and then they all dropped their flip-flops all over the place. That's what happened, of course, to Napoleon at Waterloo. All the flip-flops lost them there. Um, no, so yes, the Roman Romans were, were very well organized and very violent and they went around the world conquering, you know, killing loads of people. And um, they, they invented the, the pokey pokey sword, non-glamorous, the pokey pokey sword, that was their technique. Because all these other people had huge double-bladed axes and they'd go around going pokey 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 pokey. 
and then just go up to a, it's great because you go up to a, a big huge Visigoth and say you're a big smelly goth aren't you and he goes well I'll get you there and you just go <laughs> oh shit good point they, they developed the first tank, years before tanks, they developed, uh, I think it's called the tortoise, which is the scariest tank. Um, they got all the platoon together and they'd all hold their shields on the outside, and all the shields, all the shields around, and hit shields over the top as well. And then they'd all chug around like this with the pokey pokey swords on the outside. Pokey 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 pokey. And the people in the middle just didn't have to do anything, they just... <laughs> they could lift up and go, you're all a bunch of bastards! <laughs> I could take you all on. Hey, you. Oh, you. Oh, it's all broken up. Oh. <laughs> but Jesus, yes, groovy. And he, he was against, he was for change, wasn't he? He was for updating, which is really weird with, with today people saying, don't change anything. Just what Jesus said. He said, come along and change everything. Because the Pharisees were the people who run the, th the show at the time here, right? And they said, um, the Pharisees said, you've got to talk to God through us because we've got the big hats and stuff. And um, Jesus was against them, and he was against the, the hypocrites as well. Do you remember the hypocrites? It used to feature in the Bible a lot. Says, and the hypocrites did come into town and say, oh, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> and the people just say, but you told us to do this, you bloody hypocrites. Said, yes, thanks, thanks very much. <laughs> thanks for noticing. <laughs> who were the hypocrites? A lot of people who were uh, duty-bound to go and say, what a stupid idea. It's your idea. Thanks very much. <laughs> Hypocrite. Thank you very much. It's my religion. <laughs> Hypocrisy is a religion. Anyway, so Jesus did talk. He talked to his people and he did miracles, didn't he? The, the walking on water, the fishes and loaves, the water into wine, and the socks into sugar. <laughs> socks into sugar was hushed up rather, of course. Um, <laughs> for the people were there, assembled one day, and they said, Jesus, we have no sugar for our coffee. What shall we do? And Jesus said, No problem. See my socks? Pow! And they were sugar. <laughs> And the people did say, uh, actually, um, well, we're all trying to cut down anyway, Jesus. Appreciate it, appreciate it. But, um, oh, I've spilled my, I've spilled mine. Oh, we've all spilled ours all at once. Oh, oh, so, all right, anyway, appreciate that. But, um, uh, next time, another time, thanks. And he talked in parables, and he wanted people to work out what he was talking about. So he, he would tell them stories. And the people would say, this is a bit confusing. Can you just tell us, Ten Commandments? Yeah, they're much here. Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments. Tell us all the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments. And he says, all right, all right, I'll tell you the Ten Commandments at bedtime. Um, and the Ten Commandments are much more simple. They were just direct laws. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not do eight other things. <laughs> Thou shalt not cover thy neighbour's ox as one, yeah? Because um, uh, your neighbour would come in and say, where's my bloody ox? <laughs> Whose tarpaulin is it? <laughs> What's my ox doing under this tarpaulin? <laughs> Do you cover my ox? <laughs> I'm your neighbour. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbour's ox, saith the Lord. It was the comedy commandment, wasn't it? <laughs> But Moses was down the hill with the Nine Commandments and God said, no, just hold on a second there. Um, um, Moses, if you could. I just got one more commandment. This is a sort of comedy light relief thing. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's ox, brackets, blankets, or tarpaulin, etc. There you go. Good luck. Well done. And Moses says, oh, thanks. Because I can't do Charlton Heston. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, cheers, mate. Yeah. So he said he talked parables. He said, I say to you, a man, he doth have two sons. To one son, he doth give land and fish and goats and milk and cheese and eggs and bananas. Lots of stuff from a supermarket, okay? <laughs> to his other son, he doth give him only a tangled slinky. <laughs> I say to you, it is easier for the first son to go to the kingdom of heaven than it is for the second son to untangle their slinky. <laughs> and the people would listen and go, oh, it's true. Oh, I've had a slinky. Oh, it's a... Have you heard what? Yeah, it's tragic. Tell us another story, Lord. That one was most bizarre. <laughs> I will tell you another story. I'll just uh, go think of one. <sighs> okay, I've got one. This is a great one. You love this one. Uh, a man, he doth have eight sons. To one son, he doth give the other seven. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay, I got it. There we go. Two men doth go into a pub. And, um, oh, God. Oh, look, just smoke this. You'll understand. Oh, I see. And they were relaxed and groovy people there, and they did sit around the, the bonfire of a night going, oh, oh, I wish we had a guitar. 
But religions are still linked into schools. Schools actually have a religion, which is really weird. Schools should teach all religions and all philosophies, all the positive, groovy ones, so you can pick and choose as a child. And it's a choice, that's the good thing. But I went to one that had the Anglican faith, the Church of England, built into it. And I said, well, Vicar, this comes from, from Jesus' ideas. Explain how you've distilled his ideas into Church of England. He said, well, Jesus was big beards, relaxed, be groovy, talk to God. And we've got it down to mumbling in cold buildings. How about that? <laughs> Wow, bang on target. It really has gone somewhere weird. I mean, I don't think God's up there with Jesus on his right hand saying, go off my right hand. You think, where's the Holy Ghost gone? I could never find him. Woo, woo. Come over it, just sit down. They're mumbling, it's mumbling day. Um, you've got the Lord's Prayer. You can see that every Sunday. We will now mumble the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Charlie, Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. There's no joy, no life in there. The vicar should say, improvise the Lord's Prayer, however you want. Then let people would have to talk and think. And then, oh God, uh, Harold be thy name. Uh, <laughs> your kingdom come, thy will be done. But dun -dun -dun -dun. Um, give me today my daily bread. I'm a daily toast, I prefer, actually, with a daily marmalade and my daily sugar puffs. And uh, Lee, um, forgive me my trespassing. Why is trespassing in this prayer, by the way? It's not the most heinous of world crimes, is it? And the idea you're going to trespass on a daily basis is kind of weird. Well, yesterday, as per usual, I was in next door's garden. And I kicked his gnome over into the fish pond. Dun, dun, dun. And I, I, but he put the back wheel of his car over my garden, so I forgive those who trespass against me. Yeah, yeah. And lead me not into temptation. I'm not going to that cream bun shop. And if evil comes, deliver me next door. Because um, you've got the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and you've got a Ferrari. Well done. So that's it, that's living it, you know. And then there's hymns as well. Where do hymns come from? Hymns like, Kumbaya, my lord. Kumbaya, at least it's more upbeat, but whoever wrote the lyrics is up all night on that one. He goes, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya. Last line, spin it around, come in from a totally different angle with, oh lord, Kumbaya. But think about it, the music is the music to Z cars, isn't it? <laughs> Old police soap opera. And the words are the words to that famous television program, uh, sheep herding one called One Man and His Dog. Kumbaya, kumbaya, woo -woo -woo, kumbaya. Woo -woo -woo. And so God's up there saying, some coked out of his head fiends got kumbaya. One Man and His Dog and Zed Cars, a soap opera. For God's sake, what's going on? There's that. And then there's the huge old hymns, big lengthy beats, ones that go on for hours and days. And they're played on an organ, which is not an instrument, it's a wall, isn't it? It's got rocket silos at the top, it's got 500 keys, it's got a clutch, it's got a brake, it's got an accelerator. It's got a load of choke buttons for a cold start on a Monday morning. It's a bloody lorry. The Vic Verges, 109, black. it's sucking me in, Vicar, it's sucking me in. Play it, damn you. And the vicar gets up and says, we'll now sing him four million and nine. Oh Lord, this one goes on forever. <laughs> and the introduction goes in. Start, start for fuck's sake, start. And all the congregation decided to slur the entire thing together. <laughs> oh my god, there's one good Over the page. I don't believe God's up there saying, what a hymn, what a classic, long, strong and rubbish. Endless, that's all. One more time on that one. Could you kick up the beat a bit, though? Have you heard of Nirvana? Come on, just kick it up a bit. So yes, if you are religious, that's okay, that's groovy. Um, because the, they, they all start, in, well, a lot of them start in really groovy areas. But you've got to keep updating, keep analysing it, and keep sort of, um, and keep a sense of humour. Because without a sense of humour, people start dying, I really think. And the women priests thing, that was groovy. They got women priests in, and some people said, well, women priests in the church, I'm going to leave the church. And I think most of us will say, well, goodbye. <laughs> Thanks, you were so much help before. Thanks. Bye. Safe home, yes. Godspeed. What speed is Godspeed? 
if you, that's about 140. Uh, I've got, I don't give a shit. Uh, anyway, we've got an interval. Uh, there's a couple of bars, there's programs and t-shirts, and there's a cinema over there, there's a theater, and there's a Les Miserable. Leeds is that way, right? Um, I'll see you after the interval. Okay, bye-bye. beginning uh, cameras I thought actually when I went on I thought or before I went on I thought that um, the cameras I could I would be okay you know I just sort of breeze on and say the cameras and I was supposed to talk about the cameras and I didn't say it I said the cameras are here but then I didn't didn't really do what I was going to do I was going to sort of point it out more and I sort of breezed on to another subject so so yeah I think it was a bit clunky at the beginning but uh, you know, it always is actually. I think I'm always clunky at the beginning. I actually almost purposely make it clunky, so. So yeah, whatever, you know. I mean, that's how it's gonna be. Um, and uh, just keep it tight in the second half. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, the first time, you know, when I looked as though I was late, I wasn't actually late. But this time, I was late. Um, <laughs> it's always quite fun just to be late, you know, and just to go, you know, and oh. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, right. Good laugh at the back. Well done. Thanks. <laughs> Have we got that on a tape loop? <laughs> It's just, it's one of those things you turn over. You can just turn... That's it. You can even turn over imaginary ones. What, where were you in the first half? <laughs> God. You don't need a show with that kind of person. Well done, you have a brilliant laugh. Well done, you, you win first prize at, uh, at Crofts and Cans. And... Uh, an applause there as well, just to... <laughs> um... <laughs> Can we kill him? Uh... <laughs> it's very good, okay, if we could just... Can we turn the volume... <laughs> <laughs> right, now this is going to come in throughout the rest of the evening. Um... Um, I'm just gonna. Is uh, yeah, is uh, because I was I was late. Are we all? Is it all? Is it coming through on the thing? I don't know. Anyone could tell me. Or stop the show if you're not. Because I just I was backstage. It's on, and I wasn't on. I was Marsway. I was Marsway. I was Marsway, Andy. I was. I was. I was on the back. I just heard it through the tunnel, and I thought, shit, I better get on. Um, so no, I wasn't a liar. So you fuck off. <laughs> Sit there, smug liar, but fucking must set that out. It's all scripted. That was scripted. Um, I will put this. I will put this thing here, which I did put on that side. I will now put it on this side because it's um, that way. I've, I've watched that. It's quite a good sort of um, switching system. If you've fallen asleep, you wake up. You'll know it's the second half because it's there. Uh, it's a real first half, and you can just check. Sorry. No. No, you fuck off. Um, 
No, it's, a, it's, a, it's Sean and James. They, uh, Sean Connery, James Mason, just hang around, <laughs> around the back and sweep up, don't you? Don't you, lads? You what? Let's just run back. It's just there. Isn't it? Have you seen it? Uh, uh, we can't find a broom. <laughs> Find a broom at all. There's no broom here. That's true. We can't find a broom. I've been on one for ages. They just, just sweep up. Just sweep up. We've got loads of people. I've got to go back out. But which, which exit shall I go back onto the stage on? Then London. Oh, I don't know. Should I go this one or the other one or the one around the back? Oh, oh, oh. no one knows which exit I'm going to come out of. Oh, oh. oh, it's a radio mic. Oh, oh, oh. I could be anywhere. I could be anywhere. It doesn't know where it's going to come out. Hey, surprise, surprise. Didn't fucking move. Um, <laughs> because you can do that. You can do that. You go around that. You run around and you, come, and you come out there or there. And everyone goes, Wee! But uh, it's essentially a physical gag which involves a lot of running and anyone can do it. So I thought, look at that, I'll just stay there. And then that was quite clever, isn't it? It was quite clever in a sort of vaguely non cleverish kill the bastard kind of way. Yes, so, so, so. Dun, 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 dun. The, you know, I was talking about religion um, and, uh, and, and the monarchy, and they have these sudden built-in rituals and ceremonies and things that happen over and over and over, which is the long way of saying rituals and ceremonies. And traditions is another word for it, isn't it? Um, and they happen every, you know, every year, and quite often we do things, like, you know, some Tuesday, the third Tuesday in February, you have to go like that or something, you know. And, <laughs> You know, the school kids just do it, and then they get back to their work, you know. And, and we don't question it, because we've got too many other problems. That's the reason why. Like Shrove Tuesday. Shrove Tuesday comes along, and of course we eat pancakes, because years ago, we all know that Jesus was... Uh... <laughs> and, uh, and Judas came in with uh, some Jif Lemon. Um, <laughs> so it's Jif Lemon Day, are you? And they... It's a pancake, and, and they had a race, they raced, didn't they? They raced, it was a pancake race, and, uh, what? I, oh, but this is the Last Supper, perhaps, where they're all going, oh, Jesus, Jesus, where's the bloody pancakes? You know that famous picture, Leonardo da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci, da Vinci? <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci, his cousin. Uh, Mr. da Vinci, you're a bit crap, aren't you? Yes, I am. Now, we asked for the Last Supper, and you've done it with stick men. Yeah, well, I'm Leonardo da Vinci, it's my, it's my cousin, Leonardo da Vinci. He's shit hot, he did a great one, but... I can't out this one really quite well, didn't I? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, I just do stick men, you know? I'm a plumber, I work with Daleks. It all links. Um, but yes, so rituals come along, Shrove Tuesday's one. Another one is Halloween. Halloween comes along, 31st of October. Oh, 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 oh. It's so scary, we all forget about it, don't we? We have, haven't got a clue it's happening until... For me, I keep on catching Blue Peter, the um, sort of kids' program with entertainers and stuff, and well, not, uh, presenters, that's what they're called. Um, <laughs> um, but they come on and say, oh, and, and you switch on, and, oh, 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 and you go, what the fuck are they on? <laughs> oh, oh, we've made one up earlier. Oh. They keep making things up earlier. Uh, it's obviously. The Nick's good, good sneeze. Well, wow. <laughs> that was a front teeth coming out. So you're like, ah, wow. your whole nose flies off. And I'm like, oh, thank you. got your nose back, mate. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, so the boob, they do this, and they, they, what they do is they get they, they hollow out a huge pumpkin and put candles in it. And say, look, scary veg. <laughs> But trick or treat is strange because trick or treat, all the kids dress up in costumes and they come on your door and they knock on your door and say, trick or treat, trick or treat, give us stuff. <laughs> or we'll play a trick on you. That's it. You've got to give them treats or they'll play a trick on you. And you can give them any treat. I suppose I don't know if there are any rules on treats. You say, there's some garbage. <laughs> <laughs> there's fluff we sound outside. Oh. Right, all right. Oh, but the rules on treats says that it's got to be quite a treaty thing. <laughs> Take you to court. <laughs> Sue them for wrongful treat thing. <laughs> wrongful issue of treats. I mean, you could give them lard, I suppose. That's quite a good treat. Lard, there you go. Lard for you and lard for you. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got lard from that house, yeah. Big lump of lard each. <laughs> Completely useless. But kids being what kids are, they go, no, you can't have it. It's worth, <laughs> worth a lot of money. 
Because, Lord, my grandmother used to swear by Lord, Lord in the morning, Lord in the evening, Lord, 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 Lord. My grandmother used to get up and go, Ooh. Lord, you say. Lord, go to work on a Lord. And uh, if you're cooking sausages, it was lard down first, sausages on top, lard on top, sprinkle lard, 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 creosote, lard, 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 uh, Dulux paint, I don't know. Uh, loads of stuff on, then there's a cherry on top, and you serve it all up with a flagon of lard for everyone. Lard, lard, lard. And here you go, here's lard in your face. <laughs> Thanks very much. Here's a dagger in your stomach. And uh, remember, you could use it as a feigned a way of seeming like you're generous, go into pubs and say, landlord, lard for everyone. <laughs> People go, oh, not for me, I'm fine, thanks. I'm, I'm... <laughs> well, just me then, I'm a whiskey and a lard chaser. <laughs> oh, it's all rock solid. Um, and all the lard you didn't use when you cooked it, you'd pour it back into a thing, wouldn't you? And put it back in the fridge and it'd become lard with bits in, yes. <laughs> And nowadays you go into a supermarket and you put your hands through the hangy downy plastic bit that's over the fridge where and you can thread your arms all the way through. Um, which is quite interesting. And they have the margarine section and that's all bright colours, isn't it? On the margarine things, blues and, and, and reds and yellows, primary colours. And you look at it as you're attracted to it and it's got, and it's got low in polyunhysaturates, high in polylosaturates, low, low, no, no saturates. What me gov? No, not me gov saturates. <laughs> Never saturates, not me gov saturates. Not around here, governor saturates. Not, not seen, no, not neither, saturates, no, governor. No, what, me, sub. And it's nutritional advice, isn't it? And you go, oh, oh, eat this and yum, yum, yum. Um, and that's, that's good and healthy, and, you know, and it's got no cholesterol and all, and nothing, there's nothing in it. You know, oh, there's air in it, it's good for you. And then behind the, the margarines, there's a slightly more embarrassed section, which says butter, and they go, well, I'm sorry about us, but we're still here. But at least you can spread us from the fridge now and not have to separate your bit of bread into eight pieces and <laughs> the cat runs off with one. And... So we yeah, and then, yes, a little bit higher in cholesterol and stuff in there. And then at the back, behind there, not giving a damn, and all the bright colours and stuff just drops off when it gets to this section. White wrapper, big red letters, lard! <laughs> Eat this shit and die. Lard kills your stone dead. Does blood move through your arteries? Block it up with lard. <laughs> Nutritional advice? No. Proteins? What the hell are they? Carbohydrates? Never heard of them, Gov. Fat, you bet your bum. We got some of that. Yes, sir, e Bob. Tons of the stuff. Oh, we're full up with fat, mate. Lard, we're called lard. <laughs> Big white rabbits, and you have lard or lard with bits in, a choice. <laughs> and there was that, remember that campaign with butter said, Welcome back to butter. Said, Welcome back to lard! <laughs> we never went nowhere. <laughs> Just been sitting at the back, quietly waiting. Like Jack Nicholson. Because <laughs> he quietly waits sometimes. Anyway, um. Yes, so trick or treat. Come over to this country, small children come to your door and they knock on your door and little British kids going, trick or treat, trick or treat. Give us stuff for no reason. <laughs> and I was there and I was saying, but you've got to dress up. You've got to dress up. I'm going to give you a treat. You've got to dress, you know, costumes and stuff. What the hell have you come as? I am casual clothes monster. <laughs> this is small child monster <laughs> that has seen lard and is friends of someone. <laughs> I say, well, uh, okay, that's good. Uh, but, you know, treats, I, I haven't got any treats. Yes, you have got treats. Uh, have I? Yes. Good. Who, who am I playing? I'm not sure. No, yes, you have got treats. I can see treats from here. I can, I can see. I can see stereo treat. Um, this color television treat. And there is a, what's that, the uh, freehold deed of a property tree. That's, uh, that's for me, that's one treat. And for my friend, you can owe him. Um, or we take you to court. <laughs> I said, no, I haven't got any treats. They're not treats, so you can't have any. Okay, what's your trick if I don't give you treats? We will kill all your firstborn. <laughs> well, you're a bit biblical on that one. I haven't got any firstborn. Well, we will kill all your frogs born then because we are dyslexic and know no difference. <laughs> okay, okay, we will poo on your sheets that are hanging here on this washing line. I said, well, poo away, and I slammed the door, and they were up on the washing line, pooing away. 
them next door sheets, you see, it didn't really matter. <laughs> but I just thought if they come to your door and they really haven't bothered, just have a, a pack of cars next to the door. So they come to the door and they go, trick or treat, trick or treat, we have come to collect the goods. And then it, it's like protection, isn't it? It's like small scale protection. Give us stuff. Or, you know. And then you get your cards, so it's trick or treat, so you get your cards, you say the four diamonds, and disappear, yeah. <laughs> That's my trick, where's my treat? <laughs> there is a lollipop and a Mars bar. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that was shit, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't go in that house, that it, it sucks your treats in. It is a treat sucking house. Known in the book as treat sucking house. We went there with treats, came away with treats minus two. It's a black hole of treats. And you can talk about this, it's very weird, this stand up comedy thing. It's very strange because you can talk about anything you want. The really big subjects death, religion, sex, violence, war, love, God, and clammy weather. And. Clammy weather is the root of all evil, I do feel, because hot weather clothes off, cold weather clothes on, but clammy weather... It's no good for human beings at all. None of us go to a travel agent and say, do you know anywhere clammy? And they go, well... The clammy Azores, you could try. The clammy islands. And you look at the brochure, you go, oh, right. You go, Pictures of people going... I don't know why, all the microphone stuff, but anyway. <laughs> it's true, it's no good for human beings, but it's very good for strange people that get on buses. And I don't put these in them. These are the people who, when it's very, very hot, very, very clammy, and the bus is very, very crowded, they seem to get on the bus and join you. And they're very cleverly strange, because they never get themselves away. They never get on the bus and say, I'd like a 40 pence ticket to Because <laughs> if they did, the driver would go, no, you're one of those strange people, aren't you, no? No, you're not getting on this bus, not on James Mason tours recently privatised, no way. Now you get off right now. Didn't really sound like James Mason, but I just said it very, very fast for some reason. Now get off of the bus, I'll get Sean Connery, the conductor, to come down and he'll beat you in Spanish. <laughs> now get away. Okay, um, I'm James Mason as well, I am. There's two of us. No, you're not, you're not James Mason, yes I am. There's two of us, James. Sean, Sean, kill him, kill, now listen to me, Sean. Now which one of you, oh, it's it, Chris Farr. If you haven't seen him, Chris, I'll forget it. And so they, they get off the bus and go, oh, I'm a strange person. I've got a strange person to base, strange person to base. I've been thrown off the bus. I've, I've been fingered. So now they're very cleverly strange. When they get on the bus, they say, I'd like a 40 minutes ticket to somewhere completely normal, like the park or somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like the library. Thank you very much. They go, OK, here's your ticket. There's 40 pence. Now go and sit down. They go, thank you very much. Wah! What was that you said there? Didn't quite hear that. And they stand there, and you're in the bus, you know, and it's, everyone just standing, you look around, everyone looks quite normal. And, and when, it's when the bus moves off, that's their switching mechanism, isn't it? Strange person, and the bus moves off, and everyone's locked in, they go, I am a pig from hell! <laughs> I've come to invade your space, oh, I've come to invade your space. I've come to invade your space, oh, I've come to invade your space. Who will it be? Who will I choose? And everyone's going, oh, oh. Um, everyone becomes a Greek chorus. He's come to invade a space, oh, he's come to invade a space, oh, he's come to invade a space. And we have a way, civilized people around the world have a way of dealing with a strange person on the bus, and we deal with them by going. <laughs> Externally, we're doing calm, calm, no problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fine, okay. But uh, the eyes, the eyes are telling the story, the eyes are going, oh, oh, oh. Dive, 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 dive. We are civilized people on the bus. There is a strange person here with us. He is trying to talk to us. He hasn't been introduced by two members of the family. <laughs> help, help, mayday, mayday, we're going down. Grid reference, four, all well, the post office, really. Um, is there anyone from a more huggy nation on the bus? Anyone from a more tactile nation can talk to this guy and tell him to fuck off. He's coming up to me, he's coming up to me. I've got to go away. Help, help, we're going out of control. Go away, just go away. Pull your socks up, man. That never works. The socks up line never works because these strange people have pulled out of society and I just get this feeling that they've pulled out of the sock market as well. 
And I'm like, oh, that's it, socks, isn't it? Just pull my socks up, meet my wife again. House comes back, and chairman of ICI. All over the <laughs> What if I pull one sock right over my head and back down? Then I will have my socks up, but I will be Captain Strange from Tortuga. No, that doesn't work, because uh, what you've got to do is you've got to go into their conversation. If you want to talk to a strange person, go and talk about whatever bollocks they're talking about, yeah? I know this because I was street performing down at Covent Garden, like all that stuff in the program, me on the unit. Like, I did all that, four or five years, and, and we worked on the street all the time. We hung out there, took our clothes off down there in freezing weather, which is kind of bizarre. And uh, these people lived on the street. These were not strange people from the st on the bus. These were strange people sans bus. <laughs> strange people uh, on plein air. Really? Strange people with no fixed abode. Strange people without portfolio, as they say in the government. Um, <laughs> they just come up to you, and you'll be having a conversation. They come up and go, fish, 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 fish. And we go, what fish? What? We haven't got any fish. What? What on earth are you talking about? And they kept doing this, and we couldn't work out what to do until we realized, let's go into that fish conversation. Let's join that fish conversation, but with a greater intensity than them. That's your key. So next time they go, they go, fish, fish, fish. We went, huge fish, big fish, we love fish. Lead us to fish, take us to the fish land. And they were going, fuck it up. <laughs> Get the fish freaks. I mean, I like fish, but not that much. <laughs> it really works, it really does the treat. Don't get freaked, just go into their conversation. They come up to you and say, car, car, peanut butter, car. You say, car, car, peanut butter, pa, 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 peanut, peanut, peanut butter, butter. They go, Jesus, he's out of his tree, this guy. And they just back off. The guy on the bus, I am a pig from hell. You stand up and say, I am king, pig from hell. <laughs> All pigs from hell must leave at the next stop. <laughs> oh, he's a king, I didn't realize. <laughs> strange person about you, strange. There's a king on this one. Okay. Roger. <laughs> you don't know what he said, did you? Uh, so it's very true. Also, the other thing clammy weather is very good for is gnats. Gnats, gnats, gnats. They love it, old gnats. Sometimes you're out in the countryside and there's uh, one of those big slopey downy things. Uh, you know, big sort of hangy downy hills, they call them. They? <laughs> there's a forest and a stream and there's a sunset and the water's babbling down going, well, I'd heard that, yes, I'd heard it. <laughs> and you stand by the banks of the river and you inhale. A wonderful lungful of gnats, in fact, isn't it? Gnats you couldn't see, that you wandered into as you're wandering through the forest, going, what a wonderful, what a good... <laughs> and then you just do the dance of the meeting gnats dance, don't you? I I've met gnats. And you can have a badge that says, I've met gnats. Um, ask me why. People <laughs> go, no. I'm very strange, ask me why, badge. Why are you strange? Because of pigs who live in trees. <laughs> anyway, so, um, and once you walk in the nuts, you inhale them, don't you? And then you're coughing up nuts for the rest of the evening, going, <laughs> and then your finger gets tired and you go, ah, forget it, doesn't it? Yeah, so you're driving along in, the, in these sports cars and the, and the hair is blown horizontally and in the hair there's gnats. Gnats like to ride the hair. <laughs> and then the people get out of the car and they walk off and the hair is still horizontal. The gnats are holding their hold there and relax. <laughs> also, gnats never get bored. You never see a gnat going, oh, I've done this pattern. That's because they've got no memory at all, Nat. No memory at all. They're like uh, goldfish, you know, very similar to goldfish. In uh, they're not actually. They're totally different, aren't they? Um, but sometimes you're walking in the forest and you go, "Oh, fucking goldfish!" <laughs> but then it depends what you've been smoking. Um, but no, goldfish have a 20-second memory. You probably heard about that. It's but you know, people worked it out. I don't know how, but they obviously said, "What's your name, goldfish?" Uh, Steve. What's your name, Steve? What's your name? I don't know. <laughs> Just 20 second memory you got. Thanks very much, thanks very much, thanks very much. What? <laughs> and it's great for goldfish, because goldfish live in goldfish tanks. They don't live in the wild at all, do they? You never saw a jacuzzi going and hear the shark swims by very fast, very dangerous shark. And behind the shark is a fucking goldfish. <laughs> they only live in goldfish tanks, so that's great. So they swim around in goldfish tanks going, oh, what a lovely view. Oh, what a lovely view. <laughs> Oh, what a wonderful view. Oh, what a gorgeous view. And it wipes every 20 seconds. Perfect. Make sure it's a 20 second tank, of course. If it's a 10 second tank, then it's hell for the goldfish. Because then they're going, oh, what a lovely view. I've seen this before. No, it's a lovely view. It's very familiar, though. Oh, what a lovely view. Or is it deja vu? 
Interestingly, if it's a 19 second tank, then they're going, oh, what a lovely view. Oh, oh, what a lovely view. But sure, oh, what a lovely view. Isn't that, what a lovely view. If it's a 30 second tank, then they're going, oh, what a lovely view. To here. Then they'd go, oh, what a lovely, would they? Yeah, they'd overlap, wouldn't they? Oh, I, I think we'll be all right, yeah. They'd tell us, wouldn't they? Say, oh, yeah, I'm a bit worried. Um, gnats also very, very quiet gnats. Uh, they're complete opposite of the big flies, the big horse fly, big fly things that live in cow dung all the time. You know the ones? And you walk past cow dung in the countryside and these flies go, no, I wasn't in there, no, no. <laughs> What a wonderful sunset, what a wonderful sunset. Back in the cow dung, Maz, he's gone. Oh, he's back. What happens in cow dung? Must be a big speakeasy, that's what I think. And they've got roulette tables and croupiers going, Fet for dung, fet for dung, mesdames, messieurs. Les dung sont fait. <coughs> and very noisy flies as well. They're always shaving. <coughs> Ready. Sometimes they, they fly in your room and the next door's room. They're always flying around, these flies, you know. Obviously, estate agents in a previous life, checking out your room, the other room, the lounge. The... But the main thing about gnats is they have a silent G in their name. Silent letters in the English language is completely stupid because there's no logic to it. It's a letter you write, but you do not pronounce. And I've got this idea where it's devil may care, it's off the wall, but why not not write them? Why not not bother writing down the G in gnat? which is so heavily pronounced. I mean, it's just completely stupid. Or if you're going to do them, have invisible letters as well. <laughs> Ones that you can't see, but you have to pronounce, yeah? <laughs> I mean, it's really stupid. And dyslexia, I'm dyslexic. I, not totally, I mean, I can read things, but it, it really takes me a long time. Uh, I'm a lot slower than most people. And, um, and so it's real hell when I was at school. Uh, silent letters drive you up the bloody wall. And dyslexia was diagnosed in the 80s, but not in the 70s. I was at school in the 70s. So in the 80s, they're saying, oh, you kid, you have dyslexia. Now, you sit there. Everyone on me a spelling test. You just watch telly. He's going, oh. <laughs> oh, great. A uh, ki uh, cat with a K. <laughs> going, yes, there's some biscuits and a glass of uh, lemonade as well. <laughs> uh, socks with a D. Yes, there's another telly and some more biscuits. Uh, limpet with an N. Yeah, what? Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, well, there's a car and £4,000 in cash. <laughs> a sausage with an S. I'll have that biscuit back. <laughs> but in the 70s, they're saying, you lazy bastard, you pretend you've got dyslexia, it hasn't been diagnosed yet, you've made it up, you can't even spell the word, you spell it, I'll believe you, but you can't, so I stab you with a bread knife. I stab you with a bread knife. I stab you with a bread knife. And the irony is, of course, you can't, can you? Because you have to slice with a bread knife. That's the irony. <laughs> it has a beveled edge. <laughs> it's a very British word. Well, uh, oh, let's have a beveled edge. I'd like a whiskey with a beveled edge, please. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so, uh, whatever I said. Yeah. Um, so that's true, and dyslexia and stuff. And they say to me, spell cough, and I go K-O-F. They go, it's not K-O-F, you fool, you swine. It's C-O-U-G-H, so. <laughs> we spell it so, can we pronounce it cough? Because we're British, for God's sake. That's how we made an empire. We invaded India, we thought it was Kent. We couldn't spell it, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Look, we've got some rules that'll help you. I before E, except after C. Except for one or two words that don't obey the rule. There we go. <laughs> in the end, thank you. Thank you, two people, fish. Um, in the end, they say, look, just spell ant, and I'd write out the entire alphabet. And they say, that doesn't spell ant. I say, it's somewhere in there. There's the A, there's the N, there's the T. The rest are silent. But if you are dyslexic, and you'll know this, when you were a kid, one thing that made us complete killers when we were kids, and that was the game of I Spy, yes. <laughs> I Spy for dyslexic kids. Our games were going for many days, they were. <laughs> I Spy something beginning with S. They go socks, sugar, soup, semolina, sherbet, shingle, shooby dooby. Uh, getting out dictionaries, soliloquy. No, it's not. Solzhenitsyn, and he's not in the room. What the hell is it? I got S's for ceiling, hey! <laughs> and they'd stab me with a brother. But, um, 
But yeah. But uh, no, no, no. oh yeah, but I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I'm gonna talk about. Uh, well, I'm gonna finish up by talking about something that's quite a taboo subject, which people don't really talk about. Um, Premenstrual syndrome, that's the thing I want to talk about. Which sounds, no one talks about it, and people say, oh, because society's whole attitude on premenstrual syndrome is, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> No one basically has conversation. Men know nothing about in, in their periods and tampons which are in this area. Men know nothing about tampons. Men go, tampons? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, oh, uh, I've no idea. Oh, look, there's a badger. Can you see the badger over there? <laughs> Men know nothing, they don't. They know a few things. The fact they're bought in packs of 10, packs of 20, packs of 40, something like that. And so they assume it's a cigarette thing. And the women are going, yeah, I'm up to 60 a day. Yeah, it's tragic, yeah. <laughs> then there's the sizes, super, super duper, super, uber duper. <laughs> super, super duper, and mine's a larger one. <laughs> and then they're very small, but they expand. But men don't, don't know how far they could expand all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Until women are going, oh, I'm completely deaf in one ear. <laughs> no idea, no idea. Communication, you can't over communicate. Well, you can because we go, shut up, you know, but um, it's a positive thing. It heads towards a positive thing. Like with AIDS, AIDS came, so we had to communicate. So now with condoms, we're much more relaxed. If we want them, we just go to any shop anywhere and say, I want condoms. <laughs> yes, condoms, yes, 400 of the buggers. Uh, I feel lucky today. <laughs> oh, it's an antique shop. All oh, right. Um, well, 400 Geronimo's then. Mr. Fred Brewster, age 81, yes. And you, and you can do it, go into a pub, say, Landlord, condoms for everyone. We go, oh, thanks, uh, mine's a green one, please. Um, I'll have one with ribs and one with barbecue sauce. Um, one with sour cream and chives, one with a flake in it, and one with lard. Self-starter pack. So that's great, communication, we move forward. But within periods and tampons, it's difficult enough for women to talk about it, because in teenage years, some girls go to their mums and they say, Mum, Mum, explain periods and tampons to me in a relaxed and groovy way. That will make me feel good about my body. And your mum goes, well, well, uh, well, periods are the work of the devil! <laughs> Thanks, Mum, that's really sort of me out. Um, Thanks for helping out there. Can you try and uh, explain this, perhaps a tad more with a little less histrionics and uh, shouting? Well, okay. okay. Once a month, your body... Uh -huh. And your body is changing, your body is changing, your body is changing. I don't know, um, yeah. You're growing older, and so, period... The other devils! What? It's not, it's not. I don't know, I don't live here. I'm not your mother. What, it's easier to disown me than explain periods? Oh, yes. <laughs> so there's that. And um, premenstrual syndrome, there's that tension and a negative energy, and, and, it's, um, and it's not, you know, it's that week before the period that's held, the week of the period, and three weeks after the period. Just, it's just those 35 days in a monthly cycle. And discussions change from, did you remember to get that thing? You, go, uh, no, you didn't ask me to get anything. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. No, but I'll get it next time. And, but during the period, do you remember to get that thing? So I, you didn't ask me to get anything. I asked you to get anything. You, you, are you talking to me? 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 <laughs> it's a curtain. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? It's a joke for three people. Are you talking to me? I just think Robert De Niro should run out and taxi driver comes all the way up and goes, oh, I've got a fucking curtain here. Because you put a curtain right there and a gun on it and it was right. See the film, then laugh. Watch the video, which will be out in five years and then. Anyway, um, yeah, three months of sooner. Get on with it, go, yeah, all right. Yeah, so you're talking to me, you're talking to me, yeah. And it's all this, and it gets really tense. And I just thought, it's negative energy, it's normally directed towards someone you normally get on with. And if we communicated, we'd realise that you could redirect this negative energy in a positive way. Because there must be some people you really don't like. <laughs> when is that time of the month? Give them a ring! <laughs> Can you come over? Yeah. Okay, I don't like you, I just don't like you. You talking to me? You talking to me? It's a curtain. You talking to me? I fucking love you, I fucking love you, I fucking love you. I fucking love you. Everyone becomes Mr. Magoo and Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, fucking, yeah, fucking. Oh my god, oh my god. 
It'd be great, and you could really just do stuff that way. That would be your taking care of business week. Um, no one's gonna hassle you, no mugger's gonna say, give me all your money, say, oh, what, oh, what, big fella? <laughs> oh, I'll wave, right? Take stuff back to shop. Stuff you didn't even buy in a shop, take it back. Say, what you just, what the hell, just what the hell are you gonna do about this? They go, have the shop, have it. It's called Harrods, you can have it. I don't care, no one really wants it. It's great, you know, you could do this. And, um, yeah. And all you need is one big visual signal so that everyone knows it's your time of the month. And I thought instead of the short string time, on the long string time I would do it, <laughs> bells on the end, tie-dye the piece of string. When it's that time of the month, you're around town. <laughs> Giving off a very clear signal that says, if you'd like to have a discussion with me, I'm going to set fire to your genitals. <laughs> so there you go, Tuesday. So that's my little show. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't, then there was the interval. Um, so thanks very much and good night. Cheers. So the next day, right, we ran out, had a cup of tea. This is the third bit now. Um, no, I won't anymore because I don't, I think stand-up comedy is a bit weird. You're talking for two hours, it's a talking medium, you have verbal medium, and you talk for two hours and then come back on and go, but here's a cracker, right? <laughs> so, man, what did I up? Um, so, so, so it's a bit weird, but, um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, cameras and everything. So I hope they d didn't really just, uh, well, you'll be able to see it. We're not, we may not release it for a while because I'm weird like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so if you haven't enjoyed the show, by the way, we're trying to, we're going to run it on. We might go to next month or whatever. We might just sort of stop and drop dead. Um, so if you have enjoyed it, do tell everyone you've ever met, ever. <laughs> Even people you don't know, just phone them up and uh, that's a bit of fluff there. Um, just to go, 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 you know. And if you haven't enjoyed it, just go up to people and go. <laughs> because the words won't be able to come out. <laughs> what, what, I shouldn't go to what? <laughs> um, or just say, oh, it was the mousetrap. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, oh, I gotta go, haven't I? <laughs> Just to think of, let's get over coffee, shall we? Um, thank you very much, thank you. This is the, the first one we've been in. It worked out quite well, I thought, you know, and stuff. And yeah, so I'll piss off. Thanks very much. Good night. Cheers. <laughs>